Broadcasting to millions from Webmaster Radio.fm's world headquarters. Webmaster Radio.fm proudly presents the longest running program on affiliate marketing. Welcome to Affiliate Buzz. Our hosts, James and Arlene Martell, are here to inspire, inform, and motivate you with expert insight, interviews, and information that will increase your bottom line. Advance your affiliate marketing efforts every week on Affiliate Buzz. Now, please welcome James and Arlene. Yes, it's James Martell here, and welcome to edition number 497 of the Affiliate Buzz, where we've been keeping affiliates inspired informed and motivated to succeed with affiliate programs since way back in 2003. If you're joining us live here today at webmasterradio.fm, it's great to have you with us. If you happen to be joining us through a podcast on your smartphone, tablet, computer, or Wi-Fi radio, a very special welcome to you as well. Arlene is away today. However, not to worry, I'm here with Michael Sheen. CEO of Microfame Media, and we're going to be talking with Michael about how they at Microfame Media turn consultants and other idea-based businesses into thought leaders. A few things we're going to talk about is doing exactly that, how to become a thought leader in your marketplace, getting your 15 minutes of Microfame, and how you can build a profitable online following without giving yourself a nervous breakdown. (laughs) Again, Michael is the CEO of Microfame Media, the number one ranked Microfame company in the world. Microfame Media is a content marketing and strategy agency that turns consultants into thought leaders when they don't have the time or expertise to make it happen on their own. They've created or facilitated the production of content for companies such as the Media Group, United Methodist Publishing Group, LinkedIn, Abila, Tesla, Seer Interactive, and many other well-known companies. Michael also writes a weekly column for Inc., as well as regularly contributing to Fortune, and is the co-host of the Access to Anyone podcast. Michael, welcome to the Affiliate Buzz. Thanks for having me. It's uh, a real pleasure to be here. Now, it's great to have you on board, and I've had a chance to uh, to spend a fair chunk of time on your site, and I've actually listened to a couple of uh, episodes of your podcast, and uh, really enjoyed those. Uh, I do love this uh, this this phrase that uh, that uh, you actually have right within your company name. I had to go look it up. I didn't even know what it meant when I saw it. <laughs> but uh, kick us off first before we get into talking about the company and maybe a little bit about your personal story. What is Microfame? So. Microfame is not a term that I came up with. I'm very pleased that uh, people lately tend to associate us with it, which is which is a whole lot of fun and very good for business. But it's this idea that, you know, in, in the past, in sort of the broadcasting era, you really needed to be famous to be seen as a celebrity and get all the perks that came along with that. So if you were a consultant, you were... Tom Peters, right? I mean, there was one Tom Peters. He was the big guru. He, you know, there was Susie Orman in the financial world. These were famous people because there were only a few channels or only a few newspapers. Now the internet is endless. It's massive. It's infinite. But the good news for people who don't necessarily love the spotlight, but want all the benefits to it is that within the internet, there are all of these niches that you can crack pretty um it's pretty doable to crack one of these niches if you know what to do and you can become micro famous without being famous so a a good example is um you know in the uh, marketing world or in the sort of you know content and social media marketing world gary vaynerchuk is a huge name and people treat this guy like he's a a celebrity i mean people who are in the know they follow him around they ask for his autographs but my mother doesn't know you know who he is my best friend doesn't know who he is so micro fame has become a really good way to market yourself in a way that only fame used to provide and we see this a lot now we if you take a look at even in the podcasting space there's all kinds now that are that are really popping up one big one big guy that comes to mind of course is joe rogan right absolutely and and he's he's i think he's would, would he fit into that into that category yeah, I think so. You know, um, he, he, I think, had a brush with real fame. I think he was kind of a tier, you know, tier F player. If there are B celebrities, maybe he was an F celebrity. 
But I think in the podcasting world, he's an A plus celebrity, right? I mean, he he's he's a superstar, and I think people are, if they are entertainers, which you don't have to be to benefit from micro fame. I think a lot of entertainers are par- parlaying micro fame into fame. I mean, look at um, you know, Mark Marin from WTF. Right? He he had a career where he struggled to become known as a comedian for years, and then he started a podcast. He was one of the first to do an interview based podcast, and now he has you know shows on regular television so there, there's kind of a, a, a line that bleeds sometimes what would you say some of the challenges are that uh i guess when we say consultants in our in our area here we, we're also talking about uh publishers coaches of course podcasters anybody in the in the publishing space i would think as well uh what what do you find some of the challenges they're having with getting their message out so it, it's it's um, very cool that you said that because I sometimes have to explain what I mean, you know, about by consultants to people. A lot of times people think of consultants as management consultants, and I think of consultants the same way you do. I mean, to me, a consultant is anyone selling ideas instead of physical products. And I think publishers and podcasters and coaches and things like that are, are, are very much consultants. I think, you know, I, I think it's a problem and an opportunity and and that they're two sides of the same coin. And what I mean by that is, if you are a consultant under our definition, after you've demonstrated a certain amount of competence in your craft or even excellence, there's a lot of people who are excellent at, at coaching and consulting. After that, I would say that there's no relationship whatsoever between competence and excellent after that threshold, excellence after that threshold and the amount of money you can charge, the opportunities you can choose. So, you you know, it's it. I, I brought up Susie Orman and it's just an easy example to use. So if you go to networking events, there are just there, there there's financial advisors everywhere. I mean, that's the, the the most represented people at networking and cocktail events are financial advisors. It, and most people who start their business off, especially when it's just them, they go to a lot of these things and they push business cards into your hand and they do a lot of cold calling and they sponsor golf tournaments and some of them make a nice living. And then you have Susie Orman and she's a consultant, you know, but, but she doesn't do any of that. You know, she's, she's controversial. She's contrarian. She, um, uses the media the right way. And as a result, business comes to her and she can charge whatever she wants. And if you listen to the actual quality of her ideas, they're fine, but it's more the packaging of the ideas that matter. And I think for, I, I don't know any consultant out there who doesn't want to become a guru who doesn't want to become famous in their niche because they know that if they can make that happen, they will be able to, gosh, quadruple what they're charging, right? But I I think sometimes where they struggle is that they focus, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but they focus a little too much on making their processes better, making their ideas better, making the stuff they sell better, where maybe they'd be better off focusing on what have the real showmen in history done? You know, as long as you're not immoral about it, you could probably stand to learn a, a little bit more from cult leaders and P.T. Barnum than you could from, um, you know, gosh, um, another course on on how to do better um, consulting matrixes, yes, matrices, yes. if that's the word. <laughs> yes, yes. Makes total sense. Makes total sense. Now, I'm here with Michael Shine, CEO of Microfame Media. And after a real quick break, I'm going to ask Michael to dig into this idea of how to work towards becoming famous in your niche. We'll do that and more right after the break. More affiliate buzz coming up after we hear from our sponsors. AM Days 2018 comes to Las Vegas, May 16th and 17th. Register now at amdays.com. Make the most of your performance marketing with help from some of the most iconic brands, including Microsoft, Capital One, Uber, Backcountry, and many more. AM Days 2018 brings together a powerhouse of industry leaders and dealmakers to network and share insights on the latest practices and cutting-edge updates in performance marketing and more. Make plans to be in Las Vegas for our landmark 10th event, AM Days 2018 Las Vegas, May 16th and 17th. Webmaster Radio listeners can save 20% on two-day and combo passes using promo code WMR20. Register now at amdays.com. Are you looking for the best in WordPress speed, security, and scalability? WP Engine is a digital experience platform for WordPress. 
powering digital experiences for large brands around the world. With easy-to-use site management tools and powerful do-it-your-way development features, WP Engine gives you the flexibility to build it your way. Improve your SEO and conversion rates with a faster site on WP Engine. Learn more on WPEngine.com. Not on my watch, our military service members say, as they volunteer to serve, as they move out, stand firm, and take fire. So not on our watch, we say, to the severely ill or injured veterans who can't get the care they deserve to live full and independent lives, even when there's no government funding or a nursing home seems like the only option. We won't leave one warrior behind. Not on our watch. Join us at findwwp.org. Webmasterradio.fm, the destination for education and entertainment. Time now to hear some more affiliate buzz on webmasterradio.fm. Here's James and Arlene. Arlene is away today. However, I'm here with Michael Sheen, CEO of Microfame Media. Now, you mentioned something very interesting there before the break, that uh, as consultants or coaches, podcasters, the like, idea-based businesses, we do have a tendency to focus on sometimes uh, things that may not produce the, uh, I guess, the results we really want, which I would think would be increased revenue, more clients, more consultants, more sales, more profit. And you you'd mentioned maybe we should focus on doing or studying what the and this is your phrase, real showmen in history have done. Would you elaborate on that a little more? Yeah, so this is one of my favorite topics in the world. So um, when I went on my own and started my business, and it wasn't as a marketer, it was a, as a freelance copywriter, which I guess is a kind of marketer, but I was a writer. You know, I had worked in marketing departments, but I wanted to to be a writer, and I thought I was just this fantastic writer, which I think I'm all right, you know, but I thought that that alone would carry me, and I almost went broke. I was really bad at sales. I had no idea how to do it. I had no idea how to, you know, do any of that. I tried cold calling. I didn't get one sale. It, it, it was a it was a bad scene, mm-hmm. and, and <laughs> out of pure desperation, I think I had heard about this guy, Edward Bernays, who um, was considered the father of PR, and he was a really tricky guy. I mean, he had a, he had a government overthrown in, in Central America on behalf of a fruit company, you know, he maneuvered. <laughs> so I said to myself, you know, I wonder if, um, is it that all of these people who, so, who come so naturally to self-promotion and hype, as I call it, is it that they're such bad people? I mean, they are bad people, but is it that their tactics are so immoral or is it that they just kind of get how the world works? So I started just reading every book I could. And I, I read books about, gosh, I mean, cult leaders, propaganda artists, um, circus advance men who eventually, be- a lot of them became advertising people. Um, just, just these people who sort of were on the margins of society. And what I realized was, if you took the the um, details of what they did out of uh, out of you know the tactics, th- there was nothing inherently immoral. I mean, it was amoral. There was nothing immoral. They just had this understanding of sociology and psychology. And if you looked at even people like Martin Luther King and Richard Branson and Mother Teresa, believe it or not, they used a lot of the same tactics, but to the same ends and, and, and to different ends. So I started to sort of cement these ideas and really kind of extract the underlying principles and it built my my copywriting practice into something really successful and then people started asking me to do that for them i built the system around and that's how i started my agency and i'm um, now it's it's cool i'm writing a book called the hype hand book that teaches people how to do it i have a a book list that i send out that lets people kind of learn about some of the books that i learned about but i'm just a a big believer in this i really feel that you know, human beings are more alike than they are different. And as long as you're not cheating and deceiving and stealing, there are certain triggers you can, you know, buttons you can push and, and strings you can pull that are, are that are just the way we react. And I don't think enough people are open to them or want to can, learn them. Can you, would you mind sharing maybe a couple of those uh, tactics that you're referring to, a couple of those ideas? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, well, well, so one is actually somewhat similar to the concept of microfame, and I, I think it's always been around even before the internet. And um, I, I call it cracking the right in crowd or cracking the right click. So, so you'll notice that so everyone always talks about building a big following, right? And you see this a lot in affiliate marketing for good reason. If you get a lot of traffic, 
and you can convert a certain you know percentage of that get them to click on your affiliate links then then you make more money but as a result what what often happens is people come in late to the game they get into twitter or facebook or whatever it is or blogging and and they try to build a following person by person and it's very difficult because usually most of the most of it's been done already it's it's it takes a really long time people are impatient you have to have really good stuff you have to rely on luck I would say that anyone who's been really, really successful does it the other way around. So there, there used to be this, um, I think it was the 20s, a group uh, who used to meet in the Algonquin Hotel every day for lunch. And they, they called themselves the Algonquin Roundtable. And these names aren't well known anymore, but at the time they were all really well known. It was Peter Benchley and Dorothy Parker, mostly writers, but there were a lot of journalists, there were a lot of media personalities, there were a lot of tastemakers. And they would meet every day for lunch. And as a result, they would all help each other out. So the press guy, the the journalist, whose name I don't remember, would obviously write about his friends more than he would write about other people. And you see this a lot now, too. I mean, Tucker Max, he, he launched his book in a box company. And you would think he would have built this big following and used all this marketing. But what he did was... He called up all his buddies, James Altucher, Ryan Holiday, uh, Tim Ferriss. They've all come up together. And he said, hey, put me on your show and talk up my product. In like three weeks, he sold, you know, a million dollars worth of merchandise. So I think one thing is make it appear like you're building a grassroots following, but actually, you know, kind of ingratiate yourself with people who have followings of their own and let you let them talk you up on your behalf, kind of do a little Tom Sawyer, get them to paint the white fence for you. So that's one that I use a lot. I think that's a great one that anyone can do. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Now, when it comes to, you know, I guess you're basically, I don't know how you'd even say it, piggybacking off somebody else's following. Right. That would be, you know, that's 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 brilliant. What, what, what would be another one? Another one is um, something I call become a magus. So if you look at any period of history, a magus, I think I use that name because it sounds cool, but it's really the same term as wizard or sorcerer. If you look at any period in history, there's always been an elite group of people and in more quote unquote primitive cultures, it was a sorcerer or something like that, who kind of positioned themselves as having this monopoly on really important wisdom and you know was sort of a figure apart and as a result they have this great importance and they had to be paid gifts and they had to be really courted and no one calls himself a wizard now but you know although edison was he was the wizard of menlo park there's a great book called the wizard of menlo park that talks about how while he was a good inventor what he was really great at was making people perceive him as a great inventor and as a result growing his his business um but you know there there are just certain things that make people think of you as a wizard as a magus i mean one of them is setting yourself apart with the way you look i mean steve jobs black turtleneck people say it's because he didn't want to make decisions blah 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 that's not true i mean he had an image um, you know, um, Tom Peters, that consultant I talked about, he was wearing Hawaiian shirts by the end. He wore this wacky kind of clothing, right? Um, you know, even Zuckerberg with his hoodie. You yeah. know, there's make yourself look like you're capable of impossible feats. You see this all the time. I talked about Gary Vaynerchuk and, and even Donald Trump. They always talk about how little they sleep because that's a magic power. I can get so much done and I only sleep three hours a night. Or Richard Branson with his balloon rides, you know? Um, and dictators do this a lot. You know, Kim Jong Il, they used to have propaganda that the first time he played golf, he shot 18 holes at once. You'll see this all the time. These people that we accept as these great figures, a lot of times their images are so carefully cultivated. They don't sleep. They, you know, they work around the clock. They, they're eccentric. They understand, you know, um, what's his name? Peter Thiel is trying to crack the code for human life. He's infusing himself with blood from young people. It's just that these are a, these are a clan of people. And if you look at any great movement, especially for consultants, they all have a consulting companies. There's always a powerful figure at the center of it that people are attracted to. And you can actually foster this attraction. It's not always natural charisma. So that's another great one. 
Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Now I'm here with Michael Stein, CEO of Microfame Media. And after our last break, I'll ask Michael how to uh, how you can build a profitable online following, as he says, without giving yourself a nervous breakdown. I think some of you can relate to that. <laughs> we'll be right back. More affiliate buzz coming up after we hear from our sponsors. Catholic Charities is committed to providing life's basic needs. We thank you for bringing us all here today, letting these people understand how Catholic Charities runs and how important these people are. And we ask you to guide them, to protect them, and keep them here forever because this community needs them. Visit www.catholiccharitiesusa.org to learn more. All of your favorite webmasterradio.fm programs on air and on demand 24-7. Find our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and anywhere you download your podcasts. Add some podcasts to your playlist as part of a better profit margin. More refreshing talk radio on air and on demand 24-7. Only on webmasterradio.fm. We're everywhere. St. Jude continues to advance by increasing cure rates in childhood cancer. And donors are important to us because you get the feeling that you have a team behind you. When it comes to research and advancements, there are some things that only we can do because we have the resources and we have the focus. And so if St. Jude doesn't do it, who will? St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. The Web Marketing Association is now accepting entries for the 2018 International Web Award Competition. Web Marketing Award winners receive an image plaque, certificate of achievement, higher visibility for your company, valuable feedback from our expert judges, and links to your site from the highly ranked Web Award site. Visit www.webaward.org to nominate your company, site, or organization. Deadline for entries is May 31st, 2018. Go to www.webaward.org and sign up today. Time now to hear some more affiliate buzz on webmasterradio.fm. Here's James and Arlene. Arlene is away today, however, I'm here with Michael Sheen, CEO of Microfame Media. Now, Michael, let's dive into this topic that uh, you'd actually mentioned it to me how you can build a profitable online following without giving yourself a nervous breakdown dig into that for us if you would yeah this is actually really directly tied to, to where we left off before the break because i you know th- this whole idea um for those of you who weren't listening we we talked a little who or who just came in now we talked a little bit about how really savvy um promoters, self-promoters in consulting, coaching, or, or otherwise, show themselves as superhuman. So they, um, you know, often present themselves as working around the clock, that they built their following through sh- sheer muscle power. I always bring this up. Gary Vaynerchuk is, is the king of this. I mean, he says that he gets up, you know, at three in the morning and he sits down to go to the bathroom on the toilet and tweets while he's on the toilet, you know, and he's, con- <laughs> you know, and he's, he's constantly telling his followers that if they don't do the same thing, they're idiots and they're weak and they're this, and they're going to be destined to have a, have a horrible life. Right. So, so the truth is they go a little bit farther than just presenting themselves that way they use what i call the tom sawyer method so do you remember that that story in tom sawyer where tom sawyer needed to whitewash the fence and he didn't feel like doing it do do you remember that story i remember it but but for those that don't please explain yeah so tom sawyer mischievous kid he had to like paint his fence white and um he he didn't want to do it so his friends came by and he started whistling and he was painting one one of the posts and he's ah oh, this is so much fun da, 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 da. you know long story short they're like what are you doing he's like I'm painting a fence it's the greatest thing ever so before long all his friends were painting the fence and having the time of their lives because he reframed it as is something desirable and he was kicking back doing nothing and I I think it's very similar you know Gary Vaynerchuk for example I'm sure he does work very hard but at the same time he's got you know thousands of young people who are trying to become Gary Vaynerchuk's doing a whole lot of work, not only on his behalf, but cementing their bond with him by working on his behalf. 
And from what I've heard, people who work at his company work very, very hard, not always achieving the highest pay or career advancement. And as a result, you know, he gets a lot of work done for him. So I'm not suggesting this, but what I would say is that if you can use the Tom Sawyer method and present working on your behalf as a benefit, you'll you'll go a really long way. Part of it is cracking the writing crowd, aligning yourself with people with followings, but it goes beyond that. So the, the very first thing I did to avoid being broke with my business is that um, I had a blog like everyone else. No one was reading it whatsoever. And I went to a uh, an event at the uh, New York Tech Alliance, which was called the New York Tech Council. And there was this guy, um, Ruben Canones, who's a great guy. And he was he was a digital media expert and he was did a talk. And I rode down with him in the elevator just sort of accidentally. I told him how much I liked his thing and I had nothing to write about the next day. And I said, hey, Ruben, would you like to do an interview? I'll send you five questions. You can answer them. He said, oh, that would be fantastic. That would be wonderful, you know. And he did. He, I did no work. I wrote five questions that I already had in mind that I thought of on the subway ride home and he filled them out and I posted them. The next day or a day, maybe two days later, I saw this massive spike in traffic. And I was, I said to myself, wow, that's crazy. Because Ruben was a much bigger deal than me. He was very, very successful, but he didn't know that. And I, I was not cagey about it, but he was honored. I stroked his ego. I gave him some appre- appreciation. I gave him a place to reach some people. But the really cool thing was that he became one of my biggest lead sources because we we started the relationship that way. So he did the work. He wanted to do the work. It helped him to do the work. And then he got more followers, generated more followers and money for me in in a short period of time that I had been bashing my head against the wall, working 12 hour days, 14 hour days to try to get. So that doesn't always happen, but the lesson is there are scenarios where both people win. And if you find those pressure points and make it beneficial for people to do work on your behalf, sometimes you can actually cement the relationship in a way that they'll want to actually help you along further. I mean, the Moonies did that, the, you know, the, 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 the cult, the Moonies. I mean, basically, you know, Reverend Moon would go around and he would get his people to work like dogs on his behalf. And then they would go out and evangelize for him because the psychology is why would I work so hard for someone if there wasn't something really here? You almost have to relieve that cognitive dissonance. And I don't mean this to sound sinister. I think Ruben got a whole lot out of that blog post. I think it helped him, but it also helped me. And I didn't have to work around the clock to make it happen. And that's my takeaway for today. Uh, aligning yourself with people with phones. We hear this a lot. We hear this a lot. But the way you've phrased it, the way you've put it together for us today, I think uh, I think you're probably touching on it to a lot of people who are in that similar but what, what what kind of advice uh, as we wrap up we got about a you know about two minutes left if you can just kind of summarize what we talked about here today and then share where people can learn more about what you do more about your podcast and how to reach out to you yeah so um if 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 i were to um summarize my advice from today I could tell you a lot about building on someone else's following. I could tell you about how to sort of turn yourself into an expert. I would say read books that aren't marketing and business books. Those are a dime a dozen. That's what everyone's reading. Read books about these unusual promoters. And that actually segues into, instead of telling people where I can find you, you know, I I would love to tell everybody about, I, I make some of these book recommendations. I'm a big bookworm, as you can tell. If you'd like me to give that URL, that's a great way to keep in yeah, touch please, with me. Please do. So it's hypereads.com slash podcast. So hype, like H-Y-P-E, reads, R-E-A-D-S, dot com slash podcast. And I'll send you, uh, you know, a lot of great, unusual books that'll teach you some really good stuff about these topics and much more. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you on. I, I do uh, hope to get you back on again in the near future. This has been a very interesting uh, conversation that uh, that you've and the information you shared has been just in, just very intriguing. That'd be my absolute pleasure. You guys really uh, know how to ask great questions. I really enjoyed this. 
Well, thank you so much for that. Now, uh, of course, of, uh, for those uh, who may have missed a little bit about what we talked about here today, or maybe you'd just like to review, keep in mind we always take all the show notes for you, and you will find them for this particular episode at jamesmartell.com forward slash AB497. And, of course, uh, if you haven't already joined us on the list, uh, I'd like to encourage you to take nine seconds right now and uh, open up a blank email and send an email to affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com, and that'll get you uh, into the group with us all. It's affiliate underscore buzz at aweber.com. Michael, thank you again. And to our listeners, thanks for listening to another edition of the Affiliate Buzz. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of WebmasterRadio.fm's management or sponsors. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without authorized consent of WebmasterRadio.fm is prohibited.